أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على أوصيائه وخلفائه وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى قيام يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل ولزوم أمره قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على As human beings, we notice that in our lives, we come across many differences and disagreements amongst ourselves. And to disagree with one another is something that is natural to our human lives. It's not something that is extraordinary, but something that is part of being a human being is for us to disagree on certain things. And there could be many reasons why we disagree. Because each and every one of us as individuals and as communities, we are different. We have different backgrounds. We have different levels of education. We have different perceptions. We have different tastes. And as a result, this causes us to disagree on certain things. We don't always agree on everything. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, He says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا If God willed, if God wanted to, He would have made all of you human beings, all of you into one nation, exactly the same. There would be no difference in your background or your la language or your color or, or anything else. There would be no differentiating factors. You'd all be the same. The reason why Allah continues, He says, وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِيمَا آتَاكُمْ However, He has made you different. He has designed you as different in order to test you with that which He has given you. And then He says, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Compete, race with one another in doing good. In another verse in Surah Al Hujurat, a very famous verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, we have created you from a male and from a female, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu. We have made you, it is by divine decree, by divine design that we have made you into differing nations and tribes so that we give you the opportunity to get to know one another, to recognize one another. And so this, the differences that we have in part are by divine decree, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's design. And we know that our differences, the differences we have with one another, they cannot and they will not completely disappear. They will always be there. They have always been there in the past and they will continue to always be there. And so what do we do about this? How do we deal with this inevitable situation, a situation where there will always be differences and disagreements 
between us? What do we do? Is there a solution to this apparent problem that we may have, that we have differences with one another? Can we still live with one another without enmity and discord and hatred because of our differences? Absolutely. I think that we definitely can live with our differences without being in a state of enmity or dissension or discord. Because the problem, brothers and sisters, is not that we have differences, but the problem is the way that we have our differences. The problem is the way that we differ with one another. And this is based on our attitudes, this is based on our training, this is based on our discipline. Now, before we get into that which is acceptable, the acceptable types of disagreements that we have and the non-acceptable types of disagreements, it's important for us to define the types of disagreements that we have. There are a few. One type of disagreement that we may have is known in Arabic as ikhtilaf. And this is based on a genuine disagreement, something that is real. It's a genuine disagreement. For example, two people, two individuals, me and my friend, perhaps we genuinely differ when it comes to our taste in food, right? I may adore a certain food. Sushi may be delicious for me. I may adore sushi. My friend, on the other hand, may not like sushi so much, right? And this is genuine disagreement because my taste buds they love the taste of sushi or a specific type of food. And my friends' taste buds, they don't. It's something natural. It's something genuine. It's not a competition that we're having. And by the way, if anyone's interested in feeding me, now you know exactly what I like. <laughs> and so this difference, this ikhtilaf that these two individuals have is genuine. It's real. It has a real foundation to it. And this is known as ikhtilaf, and there's no problem in this because it's based on genuine disagreement, on natural disagreement. Another type of disagreement is called in Arabic, is known as jadal. And this is a dialectical uh, form of disagreement in nature. Jadal comes from the root jadala, the verb, which means to twist something to twist and to stretch something. And this, in some cases, this, or in many cases, is uh, uh, as a result of competition. The nature of this type of uh, disagreement, jadal, is the objective of this type of uh, disagreement is to see who can win the argument. You notice that sometimes in certain schools, right, in high schools, in universities, that there are debate clubs that are established. And the objective of this debate club is to do what? It's a formal competition based on what? On argumentation, on being able to win an argument formally. Yes, they'll tell you that, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, advantages, right, there's good consequences that come out of this, it's good for democracy, and so on and so forth. But in the end, basically what it is, is a competition to see who can win an argument. That's what it is. And that's the end result. It's not about debating an issue for the truth necessarily. It could be, but that's not necessarily the case. The, the, the reasoning behind it, behind jadal, this type of disagreement, is to see who can come out on top, who can win. And this, many times, is based on a sense of pride and arrogance. It's fruitless. Sometimes it leads to ill feelings, to enmity between people, right? We're arguing for the sake of arguments. And we notice this, this happens on a small, small scale. It happens between spouses, it happens between siblings, between friends. It happens on a grand scale, right? It happens 
you know, even on the level of public policy. Right now, as an example, just one example, I was listening to the news this morning, early on, and we know that now one of the hot topics in the country, in the policy debates, is the issue of what is dubbed as Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act. And, you know, within two weeks, our nation is, is facing, you know, financial issues. They have to debate. And so the argument that's happening now is between two groups, mainly. It's between the Republicans and the Democrats on what to do, whether we should pass this law or not. And I was listening to some of the senators and some of the congressmen and the, and the representatives and the way that they were arguing seems like this is the form of disagreement. This kind of disagreement, jadal. On this one hand, some were saying that we will do everything in our capacity to defund Obamacare, right? On the other hand, there were those that were saying we will do everything in our capacity to make sure it passes and it's just for the sake of argument. And this causes ill feelings in some cases. And this is one example, but it causes ill feelings towards one another. This is a second type of disagreement and the third is known in Arabic as shiqaq. And that the origin of is dissension. The origin of this is disunity and discourse. Two groups with mutually exclusive claims and ideas and there is no room for the other. There is no room for an alternative. You're either with us or you're against us. There's nothing in the middle. And unfortunately, we notice that sometimes some groups, some individuals, they differ and they argue based on this in order to cause disunity, in order to cause dissension. Because they have an exclusive view and they believe that they possess the absolute truth and there is no room for debate. And we notice this within even some circles within the Muslim community. Take a look at Wahhabism for instance as an example. With Wahhabism the ideology is exclusively theirs. The truth is exclusively theirs. There is absolutely no room for any debate. No room for anything. You take a very literalist interpretation and understanding of the Quran and there's no room for negotiation. There's no room. If, even if you try to debate, it's fruitless because they've already shunned you out. And this causes dissension, it causes disunity, it causes the breakup of a community. And so these are some types of the disagreements that we have. And to go back, we know that some disagreements are acceptable while others are not acceptable. The acceptable disagreements that we have, brothers and sisters, are those which are based on the truth. If the disagreement that we have is based on wanting to seek the truth, then this is okay. In fact, this enriches our society. This causes our intellectual discourses and our societies to be dynamic, not to be static, to progress. Because we are disagreeing based on what? Based on the truth, based on wanting to reach the truth. We're not disagreeing or arguing just because or for the sake of arguments. An example of this is that which we see when it comes to jurisprudence that which we see when it comes to fiqh, right? Between the different schools of thought, whether it's the Sunni schools of thought, the four schools of thought, whether it's the Ja'fari Shia school of thought, or even within these schools of thought, between the scholars, between those who are experts in the field, there are differences. But these differences are based on what? They're based on a desire to seek the truth. It's genuine, it's authentic, it's not based on just wanting to be the opposite or just wanting to argue or debate with someone for the sake of argument or debate. And there are many reasons why these differences and disagreements, they occur. It could be for the lack of knowledge. Let's take a quick example. For instance, we notice the infamous issue of 
the beginning and the end of the lunar month, right? The sighting of the moon or the non-sighting of the moon that we have on an annual basis. And perhaps we've had this debate for many decades and centuries and we'll probably have it for many decades and centuries. But what is the origin? Because some people, they come and they say, well, if you look at the scholars, their understanding is different and they disagree on this very simple topic. And what's going on? Aren't we supposed to have a sense of unity within the community? Why do we disagree? This person's celebrating Eid and it's usually just Eid, right? Why this person is celebrating the beginning of the month of Ramadan on this day, this person is on that day, it's a sense of unity, this is a breakup. Why are our scholars, for instance, why do they disagree? Well, there's basis, there's authentic and genuine basis for this disagreement. It could be because of the information, it could be because of the narrations that a certain scholar depends upon. It's more complex, it could be because of the deductive methodology of the scholar. It's not very simple. Scholars who dedicate their entire lives in order to study the specifics of the methodology, in order to stu study the specifics of jurisprudence and how to extract the laws from their original and authentic sources, you're dealing with an ocean of knowledge. And so their origins and their reasons are genuine. But it is quite inevitable that they will have differences and disagreements and this is perfectly fine. There's no problem in that. The unacceptable form of disagreements are those which are based on pride, those which are based on arrogance, those which are based on personal whims, those which are based on blind loyalty. When it's this way or nothing else. I've been taught to understand this way and that's it. I have no room for debate, no room for argument. It's either my way or the highway. Don't try to talk to me, don't try to debate or argue with me because I blindly follow a certain path and this is destructive. This is destructive. This causes a society to end up in discord, in enmity, to break up the society. It impedes progress. It causes the society to stay static and this is not acceptable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Allah says, do not engage in fruitless arguments, in arguments with no genuine, that have no genuine nature to them. Why? For two reasons. فَتَفْشَلُوا Number one, you will lose. Right? And number two, what? وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ You will lose the power that you have. You will break up, you will disintegrate, and the power that you have will also disintegrate. It will break up with you. And then you become an easy target for those who are looking to prey on you. And so this is the type of disagreement that is not acceptable. It's very much like a group of people who have fallen into a pit and instead of cooperating with one another, they're arguing as to who should leave the pit first. And they're both, they're all jumping, trying to leave this pit. They lose their power, they lose their effort, they end up dying altogether in the pit instead of trying to cooperate with one another so that all of them can come out of this pit successfully. And this is the type of disagreement that is not acceptable. In the second khutbah, I will allude to how we can overcome this type of unacceptable disagreement. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr. Inna al-insana lafi khus illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه 
ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الله صلى الله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على أصيائه وخلفائه وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وعلى أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل ولزوم أمره قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فاعبدون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم As I mentioned that disagreement between us between human beings is something natural to our life and it's okay for us to disagree as long as we keep a few conditions in mind. The first condition, brothers and sisters, is that is not just specific to this, but to our lives in general, and that is to try to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After all, our ultimate objective in this life, according to the Quran, the Quran says that God created us in order to express obedience to Him. This is one of the ultimate objectives of this life. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ To express obedience and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in order to do so satisfactorily and successfully we have to always seek the pleasure of our Creator. We have to seek the satisfaction of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do engage and interact with one another, this should also be the basis of our interaction. That when we interact with one another, we do so on the basis of seeking the pleasure and the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one. Number two is that we remind ourselves to avoid certain characteristics to avoid certain attributes, adopting certain attributes in our dialogue, in our interactions with those around us. One of them is to avoid generalizing, to avoid stereotyping. This is something which is very important for us brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, we notice that sometimes some individuals, they tend to stereotype or generalize whether it's regarding a certain nationality, all Iraqis are this, all Pakistanis are this or that, for instance, or it's you know, an ethnicity or a race or a language or a culture or a religion. And we know this as Muslims, we know this because in current times, for the most part, we are victims to certain stereotypes. We are victims to certain generalizations when certain media outlets, individuals and groups, they come out and they generalize and they say, because of a certain issue that happened, right? All Muslims are terrorists. All Muslims are violent. All Muslims are extremists. And so we understand the impact and the effect of being stereotyped. And as a result, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is to avoid generalizing. When engaging with someone who comes from a different background, whether it's a school of thought within Islam or an ideology within Islam or outside Islam, it's important for us not to generalize. In this day and age, we live in an age where we practically live in 
a global village. No longer do we live in a world where the countries on the other side of the world, I have nothing to do with them and they have nothing to do with me. We are easily able to reach there physically through transportation. And moreover, with the advancements of communication, with the advancements of telecommunication, the internet, nowadays we live side by side, we interact with people all over the world on a continuous basis. And it's important for us that when we interact with others, we do not generalize, we do not stereotype. This is one. Another is that we give people the benefit of the doubt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, in dhanni if some assumptions that we have, some assumptions that we make, some of this is what is a big deal in the eyes of Allah. It's a great crime in the eyes of Allah. In dhanni if Avoid suspicion. Avoid suspecting things and assuming things about people. And make sure that you give them the benefit of the doubt. One of the very important narrations which has been narrated is to give the benefit. Give If, if you hear something or see something from someone else, the hadith says, give the benefit of the doubt to the person where you're making up 70 excuses for that person. Imagine if you see something and you actually take out a notepad and you begin to make up 70 excuses, one, two, three, all the way to 70. Make excuses for the per person. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Do not be skeptical. Try not to assume things beforehand when you're engaging with others. This is number two. Another is to avoid jumping to conclusions. This is something that many of us, I think, including myself, we need to work on. Because we like to jump to conclusions, especially when it comes to our interactions with those who we assume we already know. My spouse who I've lived with for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, my kids who I've raised, my parents who I've lived with my entire life, my coworker, my friend, or even someone who I believe I know, this group of people who I think I know about, right? Because I know them, because I've lived with them, so it's easy for me to jump to conclusions. He or she has not finished their statement, and I've already made my conclusion. And this should be avoided, because jumping to conclusions does not give the person the chance to express themselves. We have to be able to get all of the information that is relevant when interacting with others. We have to understand that people, no matter who they are, they have the right to their own opinions. They have the right to have their voices heard. Brothers and sisters, our Prophet, peace be upon him, our leaders, our Imams, they never silenced anyone. Never. Read their history. They never silenced anyone. They never allowed, they never... Uh, commanded anyone to be quiet. They never shunned anyone. Even those who they would debate with on a continuous basis. They would debate with atheists. They would debate with pagans. They would debate with people from different schools of thought, scholars and others. They would always listen to them. No matter how ridiculous their claims might have been, they would listen to them. They would engage. They would speak to them. They gave them the right to have their voices heard. And it's important for us not to jump to conclusions, to allow the other side to express themselves. And finally, another important thing to avoid is that we should not engage in conversations and issues that we have no knowledge about. And when I say knowledge, I'm talking about certainty, real knowledge. Again, not assumptions or prejudgments that I've made. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Do not engage, do not pursue something that you do not have knowledge about. Either go and find out, gather the information, have knowledge and then engage, or just abstain. Avoid 
getting into disagreements and arguments and engagements that you have no knowledge about. And in this way, we are able to overcome the differences, to engage first and foremost in genuine differences, in genuine debates, those which are based on truth, those which are based on righteousness, and to avoid engaging in those disagreements and debates and arguments that are fruitless, and in fact, that cause discord and disagreement between one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, in هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ This nation of yours, this community of yours, is one community, and I am your Lord. Of course, this does not mean that we renounce our ideology, we renounce our beliefs, and you know, we put everything aside and we hug one another like one big ha happy family. Again, the differences are there. And it's fine for us to have those differences which are based on genuine truth. But it's important for us to be able to have those differences in a manner which is positive, in an acceptable manner, in a manner in which we cooperate with one another and we support one another. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to the right path. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر واستغفر الله لي ولكم قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله